Now I want to cover a game between Tarish and Mises played in Berlin 1916. The opening was a French defense, ECO code C10. And this game is very similar to the last game I discussed between Tobias and uh, Pangorni uh, for the first uh, about five moves. So white start out by playing uh, E5, black plays E6, black, uh, white plays D4, black plays D5, white plays knight to C3, the main line of the French defense. Uh, other typical moves are knight to D2, the Taurish, and uh, um, E takes D5, the exchange variation, but he, um, but white plays knight to C3 on his third move. Then black takes uh, the pawn on E4, black recaptures with a knight. This position is known as a better for white due to the centralized knight and the pawn structure. So the main difference is white's pawn is advanced to d4 and black's is only to advance to um, e6. So this uh, this is known as a better pawn structure for white. Uh, conversely, let's say black's um, d pawn was on d3 and black's e pawn was on e5, that would be known as uh, better for black. So, but continuing with the game. Um, Black plays knight to d7. It looks like black's plan, like the last game, is to play um, c5 and also to play the knight to f6. And played the knight to d7 to prepare to play the knight to f6. White plays knight to f3, developing the knight, helping to control the center, protecting the pawn. And white looks like it's going to develop, once again, the... Um, the bishop to uh, d3, where it can attack along this diagonal to h7. And it's not too sure where to, uh, you know, the placement of this bishop here is sort of unclear right now. So now, um, black plays knight on f to f6. In the last game, black actually played this move here, which I, I discussed was not the best move in that that the best move probably would have been knight to g to f6. So here black actually plays this move. So let's see how um, uh, the game continues or a possible continuation. So now white plays knight to d3, developing the bishop to um, its typical location in the French defense and um, supporting the knight on e4. And then uh, Black plays bishop to e7. Um, another possible continuation instead of playing the bishop to e7 would to uh, black could take the knight. The bishop recaptures. This knight comes to here. So let's say, I mean, I'll just show you that one. Capture. Whoops. What happened there? Sorry about that. Somehow the board got flipped around when I was trying to show that variation. So just to back up, this is black's sixth move where black just played bishop to here, and I was discussing black's move, bishop to e7, and I was discussing the variation of um, the knight taking on e4, then the bishop just retakes, then the knight comes f6, and the bishop has to come back. If you don't know, this is going to be very similar how the game continued. So that's one possible continuation. So, But here white plays on its sixth move, bishop to uh, d3, then black plays bishop to e7, and then um, white's going to castle. It's going to get its king off to uh, safety. Another possible move could have been queen to e2, would have been also consistent with white's game plan. But uh, white decides to uh, castle, um, safeguarding its king. And now actually black decides to sort of carry out the variation that I just talked about earlier. The knight takes, um, bishop takes, knight comes f6, attacking the bishop, and uh, white doesn't want to get rid of this bishop, like you know, defending it with the with the queen, because this uh, bishop is a very good attacking piece. So it's going to have to back off, sort of lose a move, but uh, um, it's not really losing a complete move because black wasted a well, not really wasted a move, but 
used the turn to capture the pawn originally, so things are sort of even. And now we get to the theme of the game. Um, maybe I should have said at the beginning is that when I when I look through this game, I call this game sort of like one bad pawn move can ruin your entire game. And it's also another example um, of how to attack the king side using pieces. And um, use, when you attack the king side with pieces, you're going to sort of force your opponent to make a weakening pawn move that you're going to capitalize on. So we're going to see another example of this. But here, this is the key move that just starts everything downhill and it um, leads to actually one game. So this is the key move, which I believe loses the game for black. I mean, there's other moves, but this is uh, the starting move. And it was uh, b6. You know, Black's idea here was to play the bishop to here, where it could you know look along this nice diagonal here. Uh, but when you make a move like b6, you really need to look at you know the key square here is b6. Um, you know, or you got to actually look at the surrounding squares that have been weakened by the pawn move. Um, you know, can your opponent infiltrate now the weakened squares? Especially, maybe I shouldn't highlight this one, but when that pawn move to really weaken the a6 and c6 squares, can white get in there and control those squares? Because now the pawn has moved forward, and the answer is yes. So this is why um, I think the move loses the game for white. So now white's going to capitalize on that, can play knight to uh, e5. It's headed to uh, c6 here, which was just weakened by the pawn move. And now um, black's going to castle. Just a note, if um, if black tried to play the move um, b7, then the bishop could come to here and check, and the king would then have to move because there's no way for black to interpose a piece. So the so black would lose the right to castle. So probably not a good move. And also note that uh, black cannot play the move, cannot take the pawn, because then um, white would just play the move. Bishop to uh, b5 check, and the queen is sitting there and take. So um, white just played its tenth move, uh, knight to e5, and black castles. And now white plays knight to c6. It looks like um, the you know the knight is coming here deep into the territory, um, sort of haphazardly. It looks like you know it's not going to inflict too much damage, but it really is here. The knight comes in, attacks the queen. The queen's going to have to now move. And the knight coming to c6, while white could probably anchor the knight here, uh, white's going to use the knight here to actually play out its advantage or turn its advantage into a kingside attack, and which we'll, which we'll get into further in the game. So here now the queen is attacked and has to move. So there are too many options for, for black at this point. It has to protect the bishop. So it really has three squares to choose from, and it chose to play, you know, uh, queen to d6, which looks to be about the best move in, in the position. And now white plays queen to f3, and the idea here is actually um, to set up, uh, or it's setting up a um, uh, potential win of material, so now we have a tactic. Um, let's just say um, black made some move which doesn't really affect the position like uh, like a5. Now white can actually win material by taking the bishop with check. The queen has to retake and then white can win, win the, uh, the rook in the corner. So that would be a win of material, a win of a, uh, of a rook. So obviously that's what's being threatened on the move, so that's the tactics. And what black plays is um, knight to uh, d7, 
attacking, so now actually black is winning the threat to win the knight since it's attacked twice, and now the rook in the corner is guarded by the other rook, so white cannot win it without losing the queen. But now, now white is going to impl implement part of its plan, and I'm running out of time, so I'm going to continue this on the next video.